Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans, I come before you today to review this, which is the first issue in the new series of the official Doctor Who figurine collection, and here it is on its card base. Now, this was released several millennia ago at this point, sorry, I mean a few weeks ago, but there is a valid reason why I've taken so long to review it, but more on that later. So here we have the first issue in the series and its corresponding figure mounted to its card backing. The magazine itself is wrapped in this protective clear plastic cover to avoid damage when it's removed from the card. On the other side, we get an image of some of the upcoming figures in the collection. It was $2.99, but that's for the first issue only. After that, the price rises to $6.99, and it is part of the 50th anniversary memorabilia collections, as indicated by the 50-year silver TARDIS logo there. Each issue contains detailed 1-21 to scale figurines, again as part of the 50th anniversary collection, and they are made from hand-painted metallic resin. And below that you can see the 11th Doctor figurine housed in its protective plastic packaging. The back offers a look at some of the figures on a display base, and some more blurb on the figures themselves, and the magazine itself is littered around the back, and which figure will be available with issue 2, which is of course Davros. So that's it for the packaging, let's take a look at the figure itself. Okay, so here we have the 11th Doctor, and due to the 121 scale, it is of course very tiny. The detail for the most part is quite nice, the face sculpt is reminiscent of Matt Smith, but could have looked much better. It suffers from the same issue I had with the new 3.75 inch 11th Doctor action figure, in that the eyes just don't look right. Credit where credit's due, the hair sculpt is excellent, and the paint apps are good, taking its size into consideration. And... Fair enough. From the sides, the figure looks more like Matt Smith than from the front. On the torso, he is of course wearing his brown tweed jacket, which has been coated in this glossy paint, which just doesn't look right. I feel that a matte brown with a few speckles of green would have given a nice tweed effect over this. However, it does sport his leather elbow patches, and I like how the tails of the jacket have been moulded to appear as though the jacket has been raised, to correspond with the position of his raised hands. The Doctor is also wearing his pink shirt, complete with a burgundy bow tie, white buttons, and red braces, so the detail on the torso is very good. The legs are just a basic black to match his trousers, but do contain some creased and wrinkled material effect, while the brown boots have some vague detailing of laces. I do really like the pose this figure has been moulded in. It is, of course, from when the Doctor gives his speech to the Alliance when the Pandorica opens, where he's being very commanding and grandiose, so I really like that they've chosen that moment to emulate him in, in figure form. So he has Rivers' communicator raised to his mouth there with one hand, while with the other hand he's pointing skyward. It's a great display pose. Talking of display, the figure is mounted to this black hexagonal base, which it cannot be removed from. It's very basic and could have done with maybe some girlfriend text or the DW insignia to give it some life, but no, it's just black plastic with some legal guard moulded onto the back. The underside contains a silver sticker with more legal fatis, plus, I really like this, some soft fabric cloth so the figure doesn't scrape your surfaces should you have it on display in a glass cabinet. That's a great touch. So, overall for detail, it's fur but does leave a lot to be desired. Let's quickly move on to the companion magazine. It's very short with a total of 20 pages in all. It offers sections on your figurine which covers not only the detail on the figure itself but also the 11th Doctor's outfit, the moment in time which the figure is from, essentially a breakdown of the scene it appears in. Next we have 50 years of Doctor Who which is very interesting as it covers the major milestones in the series history starting of course with 1963, the year it all began. This is followed by some blurb about the TARDIS which any self-respecting fan will know anyway. And if FAQ on the Series 5 finale episodes and a bit of blurb on Stephen Moffat. The back page is just an advertisement for issue 2 and the Davros figure. So, really, apart from that History of Doctor Who segment, the magazine is really aimed at younger children than anyone else. The magazine also contains a forest of supplements, including this series guide, which is general nonsense, but also contains a fold-out section on each Doctor and his corresponding aliens and enemies. There's also a newsagent reserve slip for future issues, a pamphlet urging you to subscribe and displaying all the awesome benefits of subscribing, including subscriber exclusive like the subscribers binder, subscribers digital editions, subscribers display bases, and a subscribers massive 216mm Emperor Dalek figure. Plus, there's an advert for the premium subscription, which is the same thing, but with an added Dalek for an extra quid every tenth issue. If that's still not enough, there's a form for you all to fill out and send off to become a subscriber. Not only that, there's two of them. So, you know, you can subscribe again just for the hell of it. I feel like I'm being relentlessly punched in the face by marketing here, while someone yells, have you subscribed yet? Why haven't you subscribed to us? In between each punch. Maybe I should apply the same tactic for this channel. <sighs> 
Meanwhile, back in reality, let's take a look at size comparison. As you can see, the figure is somewhat smaller than the 3.75 inch scale 11th Doctor action figure, but is minuscule compared to some of the larger 5 inch figures. So, overall, what do I think of this figure? Well, it's okay. For the most part, the detail is very nice, but the face sculpt could have used a little more work. I would have also preferred it to have been bigger, maybe a 118 scale instead, to allow for more attention to detail and sharper paint apps. But the makers have tried, as is evident from the sturdy base with that fabric section on the bottom. Maybe the figure should have included some protective housing as well, instead of this plastic transparent box, as the figure is very fragile and can break very easily. So it's definitely not a toy, and I wouldn't recommend giving it to children. I would, however, recommend giving the magazine to children, as it's essentially a fact file on the episode this figure's character appears in, but maybe tear out the 50 years of Doctor Who section and keep it for yourself. I was supposed to be sent the first two issues of this magazine for review, but this issue only arrived at the start of this week, hence the incredibly late and now somewhat irrelevant review. Speaking of which, I have heard some subscribers complain about the delivery speed and general customer service when it comes to ordering these magazines, so if you are going to sign up to collect this series, just be careful. But those issues aside, all in all, it looks to be a nice little collection. The Davros in issue 2 looks excellent, and if you like what you've seen here, then yes, I say go for it and pick them up. Although, in my personal opinion, I would have liked to have seen some closer attention paid to some elements of this figure to truly consider it an official 50th anniversary collectible. And so that does it for this review. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there are countless more reviews online. Thank you again for watching, and remember to keep following the nerd. Goodbye.